What's up, guys? It's Harry Haas here. In this podcast, we talk about Elon Musk and Twitter, the FTX scandal, as well as the overall market plus small caps. These are all issues that traders should be kept up to date on if they're trading the markets daily and paying attention. So listen up, stay tuned, because you're not going to want to miss this one. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours podcast. Um, a lot has happened since we have recorded uh, in the world. There's been between the war continuing, between Powell, between Elon Musk and Sam Bankman Freed and all this shit. So we're here to kind of discuss it and everything that's been happening. So I guess the latest development in the economy has been that the Fed chair Powell came out and basically said that he was, um, they were watching the idea of slowing the rate hikes uh, coming yeah. into December. They, they, um, with, they said they could. Yes, they said they could. Um, which the markets reacted like super positively to. I think we had like a two percent up there on the Dow. Like I think it was it was markets ripped and and it's been pretty good since then. So um, yeah, I mean I don't I don't know. I was just saying to Harry like I have a weird feeling, and I hope I'm wrong. I think that Powell has a weird relationship with like the way the stock market moves. I feel like he is trying. He tries constantly to calm stocks. Because I think he gets pissed that like we're still printing high CPI and still like people are like super bullish on everything. And like I don't think people have yet grasped that if we get a handle on on inflation, like we're probably going, if not already, into a, like a deeper recession, right? Yeah. So so I don't know, man. Like, how do you feel about it? I mean, I think that the thing is, is that I don't think that they want to risk hyperinflation. I think that that is their biggest fear right now. Um, you know, if you look at any country that has just gotten super uh, hyperinflated, Venezuela, for instance, or any of those countries, you know, it 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 does not end well. So oh. I I think, just me personally, I I think that they're going to just continue on with what they're doing. I think they're trying to just, um, it's just like in Canada, in Canada, in uh, you know, 2020 when all, all the COVID stuff was happening, they were like. Rest assured, we're not going to raise interest rates. Nothing to worry about. If you're thinking about making a purchase, like a big significant purchase with your business or your house, don't worry about it. We're not going to raise rates. And what are they doing now? Raising rates, raising rates, raising rates. So I don't think that you can trust them at all. And I think him saying, well, we could, we might, we'll think about it. It is, I guess, in a sense, bullish, but... I don't think that that's where they're going to go. You know, I don't, I don't trust them at all. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, yeah. but I, I don't trust them. Yeah. It's interesting. Like I've, I have like three like little points that I, I've been thinking a lot about lately. And you know, one is I don't think Jerome Powell, um, like if you look at Jerome Powell's like hero, it's, it's obviously Volcker. And, and I think that he looks to him when uh, in his fight against inflation. And I don't think Jerome Powell wants to be the guy that lost to inflation. Right. No. So I think, I think if anything, um, I don't expect him to be anything less than super aggressive. And I think that's what's needed. You know, like I think a lot about like the next political cycles, like we have a presidential election coming up in a few years and it's already starting. And you think about who's going to be in charge and people in power. Like we need people, in my opinion, in power that are going to have their hands on the levers of the economy that are going to keep us from, like you said, going into this hyperinflation route where like our kids are going to just live through a shit life. Like, yeah. that's not what we want. And if we just keep kicking the can down the road, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And especially in a country where we already can't afford our debts, um, you know, the interest payments going up and up, are, we can barely afford it. It's almost too much for our actual, like, uh, the actual amount of money that we're allowed to spend yeah. on this, like the, our actual budget. Um, that is like a huge thing for me is that like, I would rather them just crush the economy now. Um, and I kind of wish they would just be honest about that because I think we're seeing a disconnect between billionaires like Jeff Bezos, who obviously is the creator of Amazon, came out and was like, guys, if you're thinking about buying stuff, don't do it. Save yeah. your cash and see what happens. He was, I mean, like Elon Musk came out and said, like, we are facing a severe recession. And like, especially if the, the Fed continues at its, at its pace, we are facing recession risk. So I feel like there's this weird disconnect between the richest people who are like looking out for others. Oh, sorry. Richest people who are looking out for others and the Fed. So yeah. it, it's very, it's very concerning to me. And I do think though that 
they have to do it and they have to crush the economy and restart. Like I, I know we've talked about like this idea of like a great reset and like, I almost feel like it's severely needed because yeah. everything got too out of hand and now it's our time to kind of fix it. And it's Jerome Powell's time to fix it a hundred percent. Yeah. And I also think like there's, there's a big issue with Bezos and Musk coming out and saying those things as well. Cause it's like, when did those guys ever lead us down the right path? You know, like I, I like, Musk. Oh. I like him. I like, you know, I don't really love Bezos, but you know, I like Musk, but it's like, when did, have you ever like at a time in history, have you ever seen a billionaire come out and say, Oh, don't spend money. Oh, don't do this. So it's like the other end of the coin that I'm struggling with as well in this situation is that I'm like, fuck, are we just going to go up and just rip? And it's like all over with. And this was the recession that everyone was talking about. Like, is that, is that it? You know, because it's like you had Bill Ackman come out on CNBC when all the COVID stocks were crashing. And he's like, I'm selling everything. I'm selling everything. I'm selling everything. Sell, sell, sell. And he was actually buying, you know? So it's like, it, it has the crash already happened? Are these guys just coming out and scaring people? You know, like he makes a living selling those TVs that he was talking about, people not buying and selling those refrigerators and selling those this and that and the other thing. That's and what's confusing. Like, That's what I don't get. And and he's coming out and saying, oh, like, um, I don't really, you know, think that you should be spending money and yada, yada, yada. It's like, I have never heard anyone that sells anything say, don't buy my product. Like, I've, I've never even heard yep. of that. So it's like, is it just all bullshit? You know, are they, or are, is this the one time in human history where they're trying to look out for people? It's very confusing. Yeah. I mean, the truth is like, I like to believe that nobody knows, but the reality is like, if you get to that level of wealth, especially through like a public company, like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, guys like that have a, have a little bit more insight into like where we're headed because they see it on a, on a broader scale as far as like orders, as far as price costs, uh, all that stuff and oh, yeah. what it costs their business. And I don't know. I just, I can't imagine a world where Jeff Bezos <clears throat> comes out and says, don't buy this, don't buy that. I mean, it just doesn't, makes sense and like elon musk is very public on twitter now about yeah. how they're pushing us into a recession if they don't halt interest rates i mean i don't know i to me it's as crazy as it sounds like i'm maybe i'm contrarian this way but like i want them to keep going as much as it fucks up yeah. the economy like i think people really need to wake up and i'm getting very like frustrated and fed up with like the direction we're going people yeah. are we've talked to us all the time people are lazy no one wants to work you can't get people to work normal hours. Um, businesses are closing super early. I, my friend just got, uh, he was at the airport in Florida at like eight o'clock at night, all the restaurants were closed. They had no staff. That's what everyone was saying. Like there is some weird shit going on in the world that like, I almost feel like we need to get punished for, which sounds like really dark, but like, yeah, obviously, the same way though. Yeah, I do. We, we, I don't want, I don't want to keep blaming stimulus because at some point, like, there wasn't that. I mean, don't get me wrong. As a country, we printed a shit ton. As an individual, though, most people I know got like three grand or like four grand. They're not living off that four grand two years later. So, like, mm. we just something happened through COVID that has changed people's mindsets and they're just like barely stringing along financially. And I think it needs to get worse. So people wake up and like, shit, like, I need to go back to work because yeah. as much as we want, we want to think interest rates are going to come down. I think the generation, at least for a long time, of like free money or 0% interest rates, those are gone. Those are done. Yeah. If we win against inflation, we're probably going to settle in around like 5%. And that's, I think, very positive. I think that's a very positive outlook that we sit at 5% and for an extended period of time. And you know what? That's probably what we're going to have to live with for the long term. Um, and we have to get there sooner rather than later, I suppose. But Again, we have to fight it. We have to keep fighting inflation. So I don't know. It, it's we're in a funky position for sure. How do you how do you think that these people are like living? Like Dude. they're not going to work. They're not going to like. <laughs> you can't really. I don't know how it works in uh, in the the states, but you couldn't get EI at this point here in Canada. Yeah. Like if you were in that type of situation, so it's like, where are all these people? You know, I'll I tell you how it's working. I, I, I was doing a shit ton of like research into this and like also just from like knowing people. Um, so I'm 28 years old, right? So I have a lot of friends that are my age that are still living with like six people 
or they're living with large groups of people. So their rent is very cheap. They either don't have a car. They don't have a car payment because they're driving like a, and this is not an offensive comment. This is just noticing they drive like a really old vehicle, right? Which is not a bad thing, but they have no payment. They don't have like material things. So they're living like almost a minimalistic lifestyle mm. and they, they work the bare minimum. And what I've noticed is uh, a lot of people now are like scamming systems. Like as a business, like I get old employees still trying to get unemployment through us. Like they're still, I get it all the time. We, it's called unemployment insurance. It's like a website. You log in, I still get other pe- people like writing in basically like, trying to claim unemployment. They haven't worked with us for like two years or a year. So like, I think there's a lot of scamming going on. I think there's a lot of like, yeah, me too. You know, yeah, there has to be because dude, how, how is it that there's a Dunkin' Donuts right down the street from where I am and they can't get staff. So they close at 2 PM. How the hell does that make any sense? It's a Dunkin' Donuts. How are there not? I mean, either when we're at, I don't know. And I think I, I get, I guess like, confused because i think i see like on tiktok and on instagram all these people flexing this like lifestyle that they have and i think everybody wants it and i think that's why young kids aren't working i that's think young I think adults too. even yeah even our age dude they, they think like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna make a living on social media when really one percent of people do that and they're trying to live this dream that's not realistic like we've gotten so far from the american like dream as corny as that sounds it's fucking insane to me. Like no one wants to work hard. No one wants to make an honest living or live within their, their means at all. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I find very interesting, if like we kind of like pivot towards like that kind of social media, like landscape now is that if you look at the, at the TikTok now, the Chinese have a different type of TikTok right now. Yep. And it's it's all education. It's all you're only allowed so much per day. I believe it's 30 minutes. Like all you get is 30 minutes on that shit. And yep. it's all like how to get better at this, science experiments for kids, this, that, and whatever. In like here in Canada and the US it's and it. wherever, it's ha- like people flying on private jets. It's fucking people dancing naked it's no education it's all people telling random stories or dancing or this that provides zero value in your life absolutely nothing zero value and so when you have an army of kids who are on an app created by the chinese okay and they're all just wasting their time not working not doing this it's like rotting their brains like that is a problem, you know, that needs to be fixed a hundred percent. And also you have, yep. it's shaping kids, political beliefs. It's shaping kids, how they feel about certain things. You know, it's, yep. it's extremely crazy to me to think that we just allow it to happen. You know, yep. why do we do I'm, that? I might be like super uh, like aggressive on this stance, but like, I truthfully feel like kids under 18 should not be allowed social media. I think it, uh, as I get older, I've realized like the harm it does to a lot of people. Um, not saying everybody. I think there's a lot of people like we grew up with like a version of Facebook or a version of Instagram, but it was nothing like it is now. Yeah. Um, I, I deleted TikTok for like six months and I just downloaded it the other day out of boredom. And so I created a new account. So it didn't know anything about me. Knew nothing I about followed my you. Algorithm. I know. I saw it was nice. <laughs> but in, in that, and, but dude, it's like the videos they show me now. It's just, I can see how if you're a, a kid or even like an immature adult, how you get so sucked into this like world that's so fake. Yeah. Um, and yeah, politically, um, socially, economically, like they are like, I don't want, they're shaping us basically to fight each other. Like as crazy as that sounds, like it, they're almost just making, like they have two sides of TikTok. Like you either go the super conservative or like the super liberal and like there's nothing in between. And it's just like, it's very, very odd, right? And like, that's why I do applaud um, I'm, I like what Elon Musk is doing with Twitter, or at least what he appears to be doing. Um, yeah. I like that he wants to make a, a, a town square where people can come openly and honestly have like conversation and, you know, actually see like real world people and not robots and like this psychotic thing yeah. and like having a platform that we can call out these crazies because if you say that some of these people are any, like the crazy liberal cancel call all this crazy if you say they're anything less than crazy i just cannot yeah. understand what your thinking is yeah. right so th- that's why like elon as like and obviously he's on to something right 
because look at how many people are lining up against him now. This is the man that they've called the smartest human being on the planet for years. This guy, I we've heard very into Tim Cook, all these very smart people say these are smart guys calling him a genius. And all of a sudden now that he's opened up a free speech platform, he's like the he's the bad guy. Apple's yeah. threatening to remove the app. I mean, you have major companies, a hundred huge corporations pulling their advertisements from Twitter. How does that make any sense? That is scary to me. That is yeah. where like we are in a weird spot with like, like you said, economically, we're not great. Socially, we're not great. And we're headed in a bad, a bad path. Like I feel like we're headed towards like communism. And like I hate to be that kind of like crazy. I'm not a conspiracy theorist in the slightest, but like there's something wrong. Well, I also think that like it seems to be now, like I've never like, I mean, if you even look at before COVID, like, you know, the Epstein situation, that was going on. People just didn't know about it. If you yeah. look at that whole Balenciaga situation with like the the I'm just going to say CP and like the children and the stuff like yeah. that, you know, that was going on. It's just people didn't know about it, you know, and now yeah. we we seem to have swung so far left that now we're going back to the middle, you know, and there are yep. like crazy ass conservative people too, like Kanye oh, West God. praising Hitler like that's bad. <laughs> The yeah. Alex Jones denying the school shootings, that is bad. Like, Awful. Like, we're not sitting here saying, oh, like, like you know, yeah. liberals are the most evil, you know, people in the yeah. world or whatever. You know, up, yeah. the, somewhere in the middle is where the truth kind of lies. But, like, you know, yeah. I don't think we've ever been in a situation in history where we have people who are rich coming out and just explaining things to people who would have had no idea otherwise you know like yep. you had trump when he ran against hillary she was like uh she was like well you don't pay taxes he's like that makes me smart you that, know that dave chappelle skit the dave chappelle skit is the funniest shit i've ever seen yeah it's perfect it's yeah, right exactly yeah if anyone hasn't seen that oh, SNL skit, that was really good you know but that exactly you know you had uh, a guy who had money coming out to the commoners, if you will, and saying, this is how I did it. This is what yeah. I did. And that makes me smart because I did it. And people were like, holy shit, you know, he's on to something. Yeah. But it's just, it seems to be that we're in this weird place of like, they've censored so hard that there's like three or four people coming out who are really rich and, and saying like, you know, they're changing elections. They're changing this. They're changing that. Here in Canada, we learned like... <laughs> And of course, they're not reporting on it because Canada is not the United States. Canada is censored yeah. a lot harder. And yeah. we're now learning that the Chinese government is paying politicians in Canada to vote a certain way, to act a certain way, to do certain things. And now we're learning that they even interfered in our fucking election and the prime minister knew about it. Yeah. And what does he do? He sits back and said, oh, I learned about it, but they said it didn't impact the election it's like bro that is election interference yeah. right there you know did you did you, did you see president g um china's president did you see him like absolutely like manhandle trudeau yeah when like that was yeah. hilarious that was killed i killed me because i am i don't like justin trudeau i feel like he's like um he's a really crazy and like super far like far controlling um but yeah dude I've, i think i realized that like 99 percent of people should realistically just they're better off like being almost like sheepy and like not having access to like social media and news. Like if you think back to like the last like hundred years, like go back from 2000 to 19, like 1900 to 2000, people got their news through a newspaper or like the evening news at night, like late yeah. at night. Right. And you always hear people talk about things were so much better back then. Things were so much better back then. The world was so much better. Right. Every old person says it. I have a belief that all this crazy shit has always been going on. I'm sure election fraud has always been real. Uh, you know, just absolute like corruption has always been real, but people just didn't see it 24 seven in their faces. And like yeah. you said, rich people had no, there was no reason for them to kind of expose any of this stuff, right? Like Elon Musk just tweeted today that Twitter, the company he bought had interfered with elections, right? Previously, he hasn't, shown proof or anything yet but he did tweet that so obviously he has something he has no reason to not yeah. so it's like it's like i just it, it's hard i mean like again like 
we we either need someone that we can trust as a country, but like you have someone like Elon coming out and praising free speech and saying that he's trying to help. You have politicians coming out saying he should not be allowed to do what he's doing. And yeah. again, I'm not hating on them. I just want to know why they feel that way. Like I would love to, to talk to, interview someone, a politician, and just ask like, why are you so concerned with free, with a man sticking up for for free speech? Yeah. What is the problem, and like, what? How is that a bad thing for our country? Yeah, and I think the the problem is just that they feel that they're being threatened by it. You know, for so long they have been uh, like you. If you go out, um, I believe this interview was like two years ago. Justin Trudeau was speaking in front of a large amount of people, and he was talking about media bias. And he's like, of course, I don't have to worry about the media because we pay them 600 million in government contracts. Right. So the obviously here we have the CBC. We don't have like CNN or anything like that. We have, yeah. the, uh, you know, we have the CBC or whatever. And, you know, they pay them. He does not get bad coverage at all. You know, I'm not I would not be surprised if he won another election here because he's he's bribing his way through. Yeah. But I think the minute yeah. that stops. Um, that's when you have a problem, you know, CNN, if they, if they weren't so, uh, liberal or, you know, some no. of those other ones, if they weren't so this way, you know, could you imagine if you had conservative reporting all the time, you know, imagine what that would look like, you know, that would scare yeah. the shit out of them. So they're, yeah. they're fighting with every tooth and nail to, uh, fucking, you know, stop that shit. You know? Yeah, it's true. I just, I think like the world and like people need to just focus especially in america they need to focus on getting better educated on politics the problem with social with like tiktok and all this stuff and like allowing this is that they that we've allowed people to think that everyone deserves a political opinion without fact so like people just have gone so crazy and like you can't even argue with someone on the opposite side anymore because it just gets out of control yeah. right but what, what people need to understand especially about a, a, an economy like america is without our economy thriving, there is no country. If our economy is in the shitter, like your your freedom of speech and your like you defending your like socialist or crazy ideas or ideologies on either side, go do nothing. So like that's why it's like when when it comes to this election, I hope Biden. If it's, I will vote for whoever can actually come out and say. They're going to put their hands on the economy and they're going to fix it. And yeah. they're going to make sure that as a country, we're thriving for the next 50, 100 years. Because at this rate, if I hear someone say that we're going to print more money and we're going to do a billion other things for a billion other countries, I am not voting for them. It's not, it's just not happening. Yeah. We need someone with control. And like, you talk about all issues, right? Like there is a middle ground. Abortion. There is a. There are unfortunately nothing is black and white. People need to wake up and realize that when it comes to to issues in politics, we need to figure out a way to come together, get the middle ground, and then focus on fixing the economy and keeping us strong for the next, like I said, two yeah. lifetimes. Yeah, and that's the problem. Is that let's say we had a third party in the United States? I truly believe that. You know. Um, it, it is sad, but like conservative, like how many people our age are actually like conservatives? Like absolutely none, you know, it's like it's very low. more that the wealth gap, uh, like kind of like goes the other way. Like the more that the wealth gap widens, I guess is the word I was looking for. It, the less people you're going to have vote conservative because they're looking for those handouts. They don't want to work as hard, which is fine. And I mean, the handouts aren't really that much like, um, you yeah. know, like you're not really getting that much, like, you know, like, but still, it's just they've I think those people have always been taught, oh, conservatives are evil. They don't want to spend money on us. They don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. But it's like we cannot afford it. You know, even yeah. here in Canada, like, like, at least where I live, we have people dying in the hospitals mm -hmm. at least once a month, twice a month, three times a month, you know, where I live. And this is not yeah. a big, not a big populated place. You know, it's yeah. not like Boston or Vancouver or a big city. We have yeah. people dying. And the reason for it is because, or at least how I kind of see it, is that 
everyone after the whole vaccination thing came out and and everything like that, you know, a lot of the nurses never came back. And yeah. I was talking to my grandparents about that. And they were like, that's a good point. You know, a lot of the people just never went back to work again after that happened. And yeah. that was the problem. And, you know, could you imagine if we were on this podcast like two years ago and we were like, oh, we don't want to get vaccinated. Like the outrage that that would bring. Yeah. And yeah. It's crazy. There is no middle ground, really, I don't think, anymore, just because people are shown on social media all the time, you know, that their opinion's right and that they're validated and they keep watching and they see people with the other opinion and they never actually listen to the other side, you know? I feel like we do a good job of, like, you know, trying to at least understand these people, not that we have yeah. the same opinion, but we're like, oh, why don't we want to go back to work? Or, oh, why don't we want to do this? Or, oh, why don't we want to work as hard? You know, at least... People like us will sit down and listen, but I feel like for the most part, it, you know, it, it's a, it's very different. Like if you, like, you're never going to get any middle ground from the other side, I feel like. And it's very difficult for me to, like, I feel like if you're, let's say on the left, you know, I feel like you are going to have a lot easier time talking to a conservative than a conservative is going to have talking to a liberal because that's sure. just how it's been. Like, I'm not sure why, but if I talk about certain issues, people are like, no, 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 I'm not listening, not listening, plugging my ears, plugging my ears, plugging my ears. And I feel like that's how people were with the corruption as well. You know, yeah. they maybe there are like, maybe there are people who just don't want to hear about it, who know that it exists, who know that it happens, but they don't want it in their face. And that now that Musk is kind of showing them, like, hey, like, look at the Epstein, look at the FTX guy. I mean, how much political donations? He also donated to the right as well. You know, he just said yeah. he didn't want to disclose it, <laughs> however much he donated to the fuck knows, because he didn't disclose it. But, you know, look at the FTX scandal, the Epstein, the this, the that, all those things just people never knew about. And if that wasn't in this day and age, I don't think people would know. Because yep. right now we just seem to be in this weird position where there are a few guys like coming out and saying, hey, this is happening, this is going on. And some people would rather not hear about it. Some people would just rather work their nine to five and just never hear about it again. And I think that that's, you know, to me, it's interesting because I'd want to know, you know, yep. I'd want to know if my government was corrupt. I'd want to know if my neighbor down the street got you know, something better because he paid this much. You know, I'd want to know those things, you know, because- yep. It, As a country, they're supposed to be working for the country. And if they're getting paid, you know, to give certain breaks to in individuals, then that's not fair, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, I'd want to know. But some people, I do believe, just want to do their nine to five, plug their ears, go on their vacation and not hear about it. Because for them, you know, they they live this kind of, you know, lifestyle that's like insulated and they don't want to hear about anything else, you know. Yeah, and I think uh, I want to answer one of your questions of, as to why the the left probably has an easier time talking to conservatives than the other way around. I think that being on the left, you obviously are more focused on social issues. I don't think you're you're inept to the economy. I think you still understand that like the financial world needs to exist. They just want more freedom for the underprivileged and like the middle class than the wealthy class, right? They are focused on the social issues and equality and all that stuff conservatives are focused on the economy and there's religion involved in a lot of their decisions uh they're more focused on keeping the wealth within within the wealthy it's going to be a hard time for a rich person to say i'm going to give you money i'm going to pay more money always it's just always going to be hard to do that if they're talking about religion it's going to be hard for them to say i agree with now your abortion stance but this is my religion the the reality is most people are in the middle. Most people understand the economy needs to flow. We're a new generation. There needs to be equality. There needs to be uh, the social issues do need to be addressed. And we have to find a way to meet in the middle. Unfortunately, we hear the crazies on both sides. We hear the major conservatives and we hear the major liberals because they're the loudest. They're the ones with the biggest voices on social media, TikTok, everything. And it's unfortunate because those are the people that get into the brains of a lot of people, a lot of other citizens in this country. And I think that influences them a lot. Now, we've unfortunately become a place where people ignore fact. Like people don't want to look too much into politics. They want to argue about the, the loudest points. But yeah. like, again, like if you look into, I was just reading this whole thing about how the Democratic Party 
was actually funding the campaigns and donating to the campaigns of a lot of Trump's um, picks for the Senate or the House, right, in these countries. Why were they doing that? And you can look it up. I mean, I've had a lot of podcast listens about it, too. Um, they were trying to do, promote these guys who were like the worst options for the Republican Party because they knew that their people would win in those states. They wanted Trump's hands all over it because it actually would help them in the, in the election. So like all, we are a corrupt and a crazy place right now. And like a lot of that stuff is it's like the Wild West. And yeah. I think if more people, more people just need to get educated on this stuff because the Republican Party, too, they're not great. They do a lot of crazy shit. There's both sides are are on like the worst end of the spectrum. I mean, for God's sakes, the Republican Party is ripping itself apart from the inside right now. You have uh, the former president is attacking the one that like the new incoming one that everyone wants is DeSantis. And Trump's going to start his own part. Trump's going to go to the independent party. I, that's my that's my prediction. That's how and, I feel as well. Yep. And he's going to pull all of the conservatives. DeSantis will run. He'll pull all the normal Republicans. And then there'll be Biden. Or apparently Gavin Newsom is throwing his hat in the ring. So God only knows. And, you know, I mean, both parties right now are, are a shit show. So, you know, it's it is it is really nice, I think, to have Elon Musk working on, like I said, <laughs> a town square where people can actually get information like there needs to be i don't want to say an information board but like people need to be able to get actual news and actual facts i mean if you didn't go online you wouldn't think sam bankman freed is a bad guy you wouldn't think he did anything you'd think oh my god he was just a kid who got the shit end of the stick and you know just had a bad month they, yeah that, him, that's like, literally how you would how you would see it right now they're making him a hero for God's. I mean, Kevin O'Leary tweeted today. I'm. I agree with Bill Ackman. He seems like a good kid. He was telling the truth. You, the, Sam Bankman forgave his parents 130 million dollars to buy property. What are you talking about? You're telling like the, it, to me. Like I just, I can't. I get so worked up and frustrated thinking like yeah. that this even happens, right? Yeah. Like people, people like us. We know. We talk about it all day long. We see what's actually happening, you know, and. It's with it's with all that stuff, man. It it just drives me insane. Yeah, and his parents are compliance lawyers, right? They know yeah. every in and out of the regulation. So on yeah. top of all the corruption that they've been doing, donating to politicians and this and that, they also have compliance lawyers, which is like pretty much the same fucking thing as like having your you know having your uncle an accountant who specializes in fucking you know. <laughs> uh not paying taxes and you're not paying any taxes you know like it's very easy for those people and then to... you're saying you didn't know like it, like it wasn't like a like you had no idea yeah yeah you know it's like it's like fuck like yes you yes you did they knew exactly what were going to happen they knew everything you know a month before this shit went bankrupt you know when the crypto market crashed they knew that they were fucked you know and yeah. it comes down to just the fact that he had the right type of parents he had the right level of corruption. He had, uh, you know, this campaign of Brady and all these other celebrities around him, you know, who are taking the fall. It seems a lot harder than he is right now, you know, yep. so they knew what they see, were fucking doing. See, I don't think people compare him to Bernie Madoff and I don't think he's Bernie Madoff because Bernie Madoff like what Alex was talking about last week, he took money and the rumor was he put it in a JP Morgan account and was paying people as they asked for it. I think this kid was just straight up gambling on the funds because realistically, if the crypto market kept ripping, what would have happened? He would have been a genius. He would yeah. have been worth like 50 billion or something. He would have had, everyone would have called him a hero. But you know what? He gambled, he YOLO'd. He's no different than any of the small cap traders that we trade against. He was just gambling funds away you know all that happened over, you over leverage you hear it all the time but for some reason and i again i think it's political on both sides they'll each side will blame the other but i mean the fact is he donated a million dollars to mitch mcconnell i mean they, this is all paper and transactions i mean don't tell me this can't this doesn't have to do with politics and you know obviously we're we don't have this much time but there's links to the war in ukraine i mean there's a lot of scandal and it's like it's really it's yeah. un, unearthing and it's i don't love the feeling being a citizen and hearing this stuff right and like seeing it because man it's like you want to have faith in our government i want to have faith i don't care who's in who's the president i don't care if it's a democrat or republican i want to know 
that as a country, we're headed the right direction. We're not a country that thrives on scumbagism and like people being pieces of shit. You know, we are an American country that focuses on the economy and is great. So I don't know, man, we have a lot, we have a lot of work to do, I think, to figure out our shit. And, and so does the world. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's brutal. How do you feel about the overall market real quick? Um, you know, I feel, I feel like we're going to recover. I mean, like, it's funny. I was actually, I don't really look at my 401k often. I just auto invest a lot of stuff. Um, but I was looking today and like, it's crazy how much, how much of the gains and honestly, like decent year, funny enough, given all the turmoil and all the bullshit. But I think we're going to recover a, pretty much everything that we lost. I think a lot of people are going to get bullish going into uh, 2023 and then, like I said, dude, once people wake up and realize that we fought inflation hard enough and when we win, because I think Jerome Powell will win, we're going to be in a full-on recession. These companies have just started laying people off. It's going to keep getting worse. People's yeah. spend savings are at an all-time low. Credit card debt's at an all-time high. And outflow cash, like you know, car payments, all that shit is the highest it's ever been. So we will be in a recession. And then I think the markets, I don't think we've seen them anywhere near the bottom yet. And that's just my honest prediction. And uh, how do you feel about small caps? Small caps, honestly, man, I'm really happy. I, I feel like, um, I feel like, unfortunately, for longs, the opportunities are still really far and, and few in between. I feel like you really have to be a sniper. I feel like as a short, if you're patient, there's good opportunities because uh, people need to know. Just because, just because there's good shorts doesn't mean there's good longs. Like that's a problem. Not, yeah, you're not getting those like like your setup here. I feel like hasn't come around too often. There's just there's kind of a lack of volume and a lack of excitement. Yeah. Like right, but like today, R like uh, R E M E D today's December first. The stock like ran all pre market, but I mean it really didn't go anywhere. It was like a hard long. There wasn't many great opportunities to get involved. Whereas the short, it was kind of like the second it topped out, it just kind of faded, and then after hours it went crazy. But that's a different story. So. As a short, I had a great month in November. It was slow. I only placed, I think, like 25 total trades that include stopping out. But I was uh, really positive on the month. So, and then December today started out really solid. So, yeah, it's been I mean, good. I've been trading like once in a while when the opportunity is there. But like, you know, it feels like, and I said this to my girlfriend, it feels like I'm working like three out of the, as far as just like, not like chilling in like the discipline workshop or anything like that. But I mean, like, I feel yeah. like, you know, I'm actually trading, it seems like three out of the five days we get because yeah. two days are very, very slow and the other three are like mediocre, but I'm just surviving and kind of, I feel like, and I've been talking to a couple other traders, I feel like for small caps, we're going to have a really good winter. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why, it's just the feeling I get that we're going to have a really good winter. We usually do. I feel like this year, everyone's so fed up with like these shit moves everyone's gonna fucking band together and we're gonna have a good winter i think that's what's gonna happen and um that's just how i kind of feel you know i just feel like we're gonna have a good winter. i hope so i think yeah. i kind of agree i think it's cold i think people are back inside especially yeah. in like you know the northeast and you know people are people are gambling again especially with even sports gambling man like people are back like just betting money and like i actually have been hearing people talk about stocks a little bit more yeah. Um, which is usually like that beginning sentiment that like maybe people are getting involved. It's it's funny, man. When the world's not in turmoil, like when you're not seeing constant doom and gloom on the news, the markets are doing good. Even small cap markets do good. And like right yeah. now we see actually it's, it's kind of positive. There hasn't been that – there's not that much coverage of like the war. There's not that much coverage of all the bullshit and all the negatives. They're trying to kind of, I think, promote a lot of positives. So hopefully a lot of that energy does come into the small cap market. Yeah. Um, because dude, 2022 was, t it was a tough year for a lot of people. So I hope 2023 gives us that range and opportunity. Yeah. That's how I feel as well. Yeah. All right. Well, good, good. podcast, bro. And, uh, yeah. yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Yeah. And we'll thanks guys. See you guys for the next one.